What's up everybody? Bill with Honest Open Permaculture Hop Farm. Back at this compost pile that you guys haven't seen in quite a while. Honestly, I haven't seen it in quite a while either. I've just left it sitting back here to its own devices. But it's time to put this thing to use. We're gonna take it, put it in the wheelbarrow, and we're gonna be planting some trees and some bushes. Fruit trees and fruit bushes to be exact. But let's go ahead and get this up, get it in the wheelbarrow, and let's take it over to where we're planting our trees. Pile is tiny compared to what we started with. And I cheated a little bit already. I peeked in here to see what it looked like. And I brought this over because I saw that these grubs were all over the place. And my chickens will love these things to death. I think they're a Japanese beetle grub, if I'm not mistaken. Don't quote me on that, but some sort of beetle grub, big grub. So as we're putting it from there to there, there's, there should be a lot of them in there. And we'll get some free chicken feed out of it. Got another one. And another one. Looks like there's a little butt fly larva in there too. So that's good. Been breaking this material down. As you can tell, it is dark. That was just grass clippings, y'all. That's all this was. It was only grass clippings. So we took grass clippings into fertilizer and now also turning into chicken feed. So we're getting multiple uses out of something that most people just throw away. It smells really good. It doesn't stink at all. It smells like earth. Some good black soil right there. Now if y'all missed me putting this compost pile together, I'll leave a link down in the description of the very first video of it. It's three videos. There's all kinds of life in this thing, y'all. Crickets, different types of worms and grubs. I can definitely see how if you had a big enough compost pile, you could feed your chickens off of it just with your compost pile. You had compost piles in different stages to where you know, the microorganisms are working on it first, and then the bigger organisms come through and work on it like they are now. And then the bigger organisms like chickens can come through and work on it as well and work on up the food chain. This stuff's looking good. Tons of life in it. I'll show you the grub bucket here in a second. It's squirming with life. And if I miss a few of these grubs, it's okay. It's not going to kill my plants or anything. These grubs are actually helping break down this compost faster. They're eating the, comp the stuff in the compost. And then they're pooping it out the other side and just uh, making a richer, more diverse type of compost. They're not root eaters. They wouldn't go after the roots of my plants. All right, we got our wheelbarrow smack full. Not a bad haul, not a bad haul for that little pile. We'll at least be able to dress our plants, our trees and stuff with it. So let's go get the trees and I think we're gonna plant them right around up in here, the top of this hill. Can y'all see that? Chicken food. It's not bad for a little pile there. Bunch of food. So let's go take this wheelbarrow of compost over to the trees. And we'll go give the chickens a snack. We've got a, a small flock out here in the back. They're the ones that have been constantly working back here for me. They have been working this area over here. Sorry, I spun so fast on you there, guys. They're working that area now. I've been dragging them through here. I'm gonna put up a few more rows of cattle panel and T posts. And they're in here fertilizing it for me right now. I just did some little chop and drop of some weeds that were in here. On top of a uh, roof stout covering with straw or covering with hay. And we're sneaking down a little bit of gardening going on. Some broccoli plants we have going. Okay, girls. Y'all ready? Come get it.
You don't need to fight for it. There's plenty for everyone. There's only five hens in here, and they do a pretty good job of working the the gardens. We've we've been working these gardens back here for two and a half, almost three years now. Well, excuse me. These we have been, and as you can see, we're in the process of of, of covering them up for winter. We've got some big piles of mulch out here, some old some grass clippings that we took out here off the property, and this part over here we've been working on for about a year and a half. So the soil's been getting a lot darker, a lot richer, because we keep adding organic matter to it. All right, so let's get back here. Oh yeah, this here's where we're putting um two more blueberries. We've got three here already, one here, one there, and one there. We're gonna put two more kind of in between right here. And then those two things right there are choke cherries, aronia berries. Hadn't gotten anything from those yet. But here's where we're gonna put the trees. These trees are Pakistani mulberries. So we've got, I'm gonna try to put one right here one here and one here and I chose this spot there at the top of the hill and there'll be a top story an overstory because eventually these garden beds and everything back here is going to get turned into a food forest I've been putting wood chips and all kinds of dead organic material in here wood chips and grass clippings and leaves and leaf composts and all kinds of stuff all in here I've been growing annual plants lately to supply my CSAs but when I'm not doing a CSA this is gonna slowly get turned into perennials with trees and bushes I've got my Pakistani mulberries they're gonna be part of my upper story that the, the very top story and I say story look at this back here let me back you out this is the forest that backs right up to this backfield and I'm talking about stories like in a building. You've got, you know, floor number one, floor number two, story number three, story number four. A forest is a lot the same way. Here we've got big oak trees and um, let's see what else we have back here. Black walnut trees. So walnut and oak trees are the top story. Taking over the very tip top of the forest. And then underneath it, we've got some smaller trees. And underneath that, we've got some bushes and some shrub layers. Then underneath that we've got some some ground covers and some herbaceous plants and then we have some vining plants and then so we're thinking about different levels of the forest as we're building more of a perennial system that's going to be replacing this annual system but as i'm building the soil in this system i'm also growing annual foods that i can sell in my csa or at markets or other things so that's the idea here what i'm doing with it so let's get these things in the ground. I have never grown mulberries before in my life. I've done a little research. It doesn't seem like it's going to be that difficult in my zone here in North Carolina. We're in zone 7B to, no, excuse me, 7A to 6B. Um, and this year it's definitely felt more like seven, in the sevens than in the sixes getting close to the end of October mid afternoon right now it's close to six in the 60s for sure I'll probably start breaking a sweat here in a second so my general idea on planting a fruit tree is I'm gonna get the hole pretty big pretty big and then fill it back in the size it needs to be um, that's so more worms throw them to the chickens Ooh. That's so the roots of this fruit tree have an easier job of spreading out into loose soil that has just been dug up. So it's in the fall right now, so this tree wants to put its energy into the roots so it can withstand the winter. And then when spring comes around, it takes that energy from the roots and shoves it back up in the and the leaves and the branches and makes those bigger. So we're planting this in the fall. And I'm just mixing it up real nice here. It's pretty sandy soil. 
not a bad color, pretty dark, but it leaches its materials, it leaches its uh, nitrogen, its phosphorus, its NPKs pretty quickly because it is pretty sandy. So we're gonna add a bunch. So what we're doing back here is adding a bunch of organic matter to help lock that stuff in. All right, how we looking, how we looking? It's about right. Fill it in maybe a little bit more here. We want to plant the tree the same level that it is in the pot. So when you're putting it in there to check, if you're all the way up here like we are right now, that's a little too tall. We need to go up a little couple inches. You don't want to bury the stalk of the tree. It'll rot, it could, it could rot it. All right, so that looks good. Let's get you a little bit more of a close up so you can tell what I'm doing a little bit closer up here. I'm just gonna break up this soil that I pulled out of the hole a little bit. So when I take this plant out, we can just go ahead and really fill it back up right away. And I did water this plant a good amount before I brought it out here. And this, it has been raining the past few nights, so this soil is pretty wet. So we're not gonna have to water this thing either. So one thing I do like doing is planting, if you've noticed, I like planting right before it's gonna water, during, or right before it's gonna water, right before it's gonna rain, during rains, or right after a rain. Like directly after a rain where everything's still wet. It saves on the watering process. Sometimes you just have to plant, and that's just the way it is. You have to get it, get it in the ground, you can't wait any longer. If you can wait on that good rain, you should. All right, let's get this plant out of the pot. Very simple, turn it upside down. Probably, probably couldn't see that there. I just turned it upside down. I had to stand up because the plant was too tall and dragging the ground. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tease these a little bit. I'm gonna put some of this soil down in the hole here. I'm gonna tease these roots a little bit so they're sticking out and they're starting to fray, fray out a little bit so it'll encourage them to start branching out into this loose soil that we just made for it on the bottom and on the sides you can even just kind of pull the root ball apart just a little bit too get these things nice and loose get its hair flowing nice and long tell it's beautiful <laughs> all right let's plant it so now when we're backfilling remember we just want to backfill right to where it was planted. I did take it a little bit off the top, so we have about a quarter of an inch or so we can put on top of this little root ball. Now y'all might be saying, Bill, wait, you're forgetting your compost. No, no, I'm not gonna put that in with the soil here. I'm gonna put that on top of the soil. That compost is gonna be more of a uh, compost tea when it rains. It's gonna help block out this grass that is uh, all around it right here as this tree gets big so as this tree gets bigger it doesn't have competition for grass as much competition all right we got us a good layer of the soil back in there let's go for some compost so not only is this feeding the tree we see how dark this is dark and rich it's going to suck suck up a lot more of the sunlight also so it's gonna keep it a little bit warmer around this tree. Create almost like a little microclimate and keep the roots warmer. So what I'm doing now is I'm slow, I'm just tamping it down. We don't want a lot of air pockets in there. It'll make it anaerobic in there and start to stink and could cause some root rot. So we're just pushing it down a little bit to get a little bit of the air out. A little more compost. And Voila, let's do that two more times. All right, so all, all three trees are in the ground. Let's go put those blueberry bushes in the ground real quick. So this is a small blueberry patch. We've got three blueberries here, um, two different types. Right here where we're standing in this little area, you can hear the chickens right behind you in that chicken tractor. They just ran through this area right here 
I weeded it, just kind of weeded, pulled it up, dropped the weeds right there in place. And so we'll plant these two blueberry bushes, kind of like in a bowling pin, like we're gonna set up for bowling here. We're gonna go, we're gonna cut the difference in between these and get us a nice hedgerow up here at the front of bushes. So this is gonna be the most southern side. When you're thinking about putting together a food forest or perennial plants all mixed, a whole bunch of different perennial plants mixed together, bushes and trees and stuff, you wanna think of, like I said, the different levels, the different stories in there. So when the sun is coming, you don't wanna put your small bushes behind or on the north side of your tall trees. They, they'll die, they won't get enough sun. So putting them down here on the south side of those big trees that I just planted in the back, well, eventually they'll get big. These bushes up here will still be able to get their sunlight. And then we'll fill in the gap in between with different stuff, any more bushes, different trees plotted out. So let's go ahead and put these in right now. We're doing it the same way we did the trees in the back. So this soil is so loose, so soft out here. It didn't take me but a few minutes to dig that hole. There's still, I'm still pulling out these, these grubs. Chickens are right behind us. They're having a heck of a day. They're loving their day today, getting all kinds of grubs. Here's another one. They're getting fat on grubs. And lay me some nice eggs. Some nice rich dark eggs so that's about right let's take this turn it over now this one's root ball isn't as big so we won't need to tease it as much it's a much smaller plant that was than the the trees were boom fill it back in Another worm, another worm, or well, grub actually. Another grub. Those chickens are loving it. All right, let's pat it down a little bit, get some air pockets out. Time for some compost. Look, that took no time at all, guys. Some people are worried about, oh, it's, so hard to plant trees, it takes so long. No, it takes literally a few minutes from start to finish. Now I'm probably gonna speed this one up a little bit. Let's get you closer. guys there you go so that was what two blueberry bushes and three yeah three three trees I lost the name of the trees they are Pakistani mulberry I have never eaten a Pakistani mulberry I think I said that already but I'm really excited about those so my favorite blueberries and we'll see about those Pakistani mulberries Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure you smash that thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already and think about hitting that bell notification. It lets you know every time I put a video out or when I go live or something like that. So, later y'all.